Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss how to use inference rules to prove a given sentence given the knowledge base in proportional logic. I have already solved a few examples using I have already solved a few examples. A link for those videos is given in the description below. In this case, we have been given a knowledge base with five sentences that is R1 to R5. And we need to prove negation of P12 in this case. To prove the sentence, uh, we need to select a few of these sentences and then we need to apply the inference rules so that we will come to this conclusion here. Now, the question comes in front of us is uh, which uh, sentence I need to select and then I need to start my uh, theorem proving in this case. So, what I can do is uh, I will check R1. If I select R1, we have negation of P11, but here we have a negation of P12 to be proved. So, this is not suitable right now. So, what I will do is I will start with R2. If I select R2, you can see here B11 biconditional P12 or P21 is present. So, P12 is present here. So, better option is to start with this R2. Now, when you start with this R2, what is present here is there is something known as uh, the biconditional is present. So, we need to remove this uh, biconditional because we are expecting what? We are expecting only P12, that to negation of P12 here. So, what we do is we will apply. Uh, Biconditional elimination here and then we will remove it. Now, the question is how to apply the biconditional elimination. Let us assume that we have alpha biconditional beta. So, this is always equivalent to this is always equivalent to alpha implies beta and beta implies alpha. So, this is what the biconditional elimination rule. So, we will apply the same thing over here. This will become B11 implies the second one. And second one implies first one in this case. So, once you apply the biconditional elimination to R2, we will get something like this. Now, what is the next thing we need to do so that we will get this uh, as the conclusion here? For that reason, you can see here there are two uh, what we can say that uh, the clauses are there. This is the first clause and this is the second one. In between, we have and here. So, what we can do is we can use and elimination. Either we will retain this one or we will retain this particular term. Now, the question comes in front of us is should I retain this one or this one? If I retain this one, you can look at here. We have B11 here. In R4, we have negation of B11. We cannot apply modus opponents rule here. So, what we do is we will check the second option. If I check the second option, you can see here, of course, B11 is present again here. But if I apply contrapositive, it will come to the left side and it will become what? Negation of B11. This is the better option. I can select it by applying and elimination here. So, I have applied and elimination to this R6. I have retained this particular term. That is what I have written here. Now, what I will do? Because uh, I want the negation of B11 at the first side of this implication, I will apply something known as contrapositive here. Contrapositive means alpha implies betas. Contrapositive is always equivalent to negation of beta implies negation of alpha here. So, in this case, what we will get? negation of uh, B11 implies negation of first term that is what I have written here. Now, what we need to do? Uh, we got the negation of uh, B11 implies something here and the negation of B1 is, is present here. We can apply something known as uh, modus opponents rule that is nothing but alpha implies beta alpha we will get beta here. In this case, uh, what we will get? We will get negation of P12 or P21 as the result here after applying modus ponens rule between R8 and R4 here. So, that is what I got here. Now, what is the next thing we need to do? We have to take this negation inside because uh, the negation is applied to the compound statement. So, we will take it inside using De Morgan's law. If I take it inside, it will become negation of P12 or will become and here and P21 will become negation of P21 in this case. Now, uh, what is the last thing we need to do is we are about to reach the goal or you can say that the required uh, uh, statement here. We are expecting negation of P1, 2 that is present here. But how to get it? We can use AND elimination because the negation of P1, 2 AND negation of P2, 1 is there. We will apply AND elimination rule so that we will get negation of P1, 2 here. That is the final conclusion required. The meaning of this one is we were able to prove the required sentence using inference rules in this case. So, this is how we can uh, apply the set of inference rules to prove the given sentence given the knowledge base in this case. I hope the concept of uh, 
proof by inference rule is clear if you like the video do like and share with your friends press the subscribe button for more videos press the bell icon for regular updates thank you for watching